All right, Sean, it's day two of actual install work on this uh, 2012 Mercedes uh, 350, 170 extended. What's on the agenda today? Yeah, so yesterday we talked about routing most of our cables, and uh, today we're gonna go ahead and build the board that's gonna house most of our components and mount that board, and also look at finishing up our monitors, solar, a couple other loose ends, but our main focus is building that uh, the board that's gonna house all our components. Sounds great, let's get on it. So you may notice there's no windows on the side of this van, so Sean cleverly added this right here. Actually, that's just for shore power. He's gonna be working on that later today. All right, this is the chassis connection. This is easily overlooked in a lot of installs. Uh, what we did is we took a cable that's the same thickness as the uh, alternator charger cable because it's gonna be the same current going through that that goes through this. And uh, we ground the surface of the metal here so we had a solid connection and we just bolted this cable uh, right on there and then routed it back in and up and I'll show you the top side. All right, Sean, tell us, uh, tell us about this chassis connection. Yes, we just saw the chassis connection underneath. Um, the only thing I'd add to that is that we're going to cover it with some kind of anti-corrosion sealant so that that uh, connection doesn't rust and then become a bad ground or common negative. Yeah. Um, and then that, you see right here, gets brought in right next to the alternator charging. It's, a, again, a 2-watt cable um, up and over and is going to be brought over to our board. It needs to go to our... Uh, load side of shunt yeah this usually terminates at the negative junction post which is a black post we'll be showing you in another video and uh, we like to call this a chassis connection rather than a ground connection because when you're on rubber tires you're not really grounded to anything unless you plug into shore power and uh, one of our customers a while back uh, took their rig to a uh, nationwide um, electrical distributor that we will not name and one of the people at their uh, pro department recommended that she get a grounding rod that she pound in every time she parked and uh, what do you think of that Sean? It's not what you want to do. No, no <laughs> that's are, crazy. Not grounded. Don't do that. You don't need to. I guess it's not going to be a peephole. That makes a lot more sense. Good job guys. To go from positive to in, in this case, yeah that, yeah, that would be the source, and then load would be this. Load would, would be that, yeah. so then that'd be our, our junction post over, right? And then, then from here, then, then we're gonna get battery power from, from here, right? So then that would be a nice clean run like that, and then, then our positive comes down after, okay. Cool. All right, so I'm up on the roof here with James. He's putting together the combiner box. Uh, one thing that's nice to point out while we're here is our tilting mount brackets. You unscrew one end off the L foot and loosen this and you can tilt the panel. We sell optional tilt bars. So um, if you were camping someplace for a week or more and this direction out here was south, it might make sense to tilt this one panel to get a little more cross-sectional surface area. But anyway, on to the combiner box. What's your plan here, James? So as you can see, we just finished up routing our cable, um, put our wires in, and now all we have left is to hook these up, and the panels will be good to go. All right, so red goes to red, and yep. black goes to black. We're going this side. So that makes black for a side. parallel configuration, which we prefer to do in all of our installations because it, uh, improves the system's performance during partial shade conditions. All right, I'll let you get back on it. Thank you. So yesterday, uh, we talked with Sean about some comm cables that were being routed, and it looks like he installed the monitors or the devices here. So yeah. Sean, tell me what these things are. So basically, these are our two um, uh, monitors for our system here. We have a remote monitor for our inverter. Um, it's gonna give you the ability to turn it on and off and to do current limits. And then this is our battery monitor, which is also Bluetooth compatible. Um, we built a piece of ABS plastic and made it the shape that we wanted to, um, and then oscillated these holes in to mount the, uh, the monitors here. Okay, so this monitor for the BMV 712, yeah. uh, you don't really need that. You don't need it to be visible because you can have a Bluetooth connection. That's more of a matter of customer preference. Mm -hmm. I prefer not to have my rig look like a power plant that I need to be tweaking knobs and dials all the time. It just works, especially a system this size. You don't need to really be monitoring too much, but it's kind of nice to know what's going on. Sometimes people put that just right next to their batteries where they have to open something up to access it. Mm -hmm. But this 
the digital multi control here. Yeah. This is very important. You're going to be interacting with this all the time. Yeah. Uh, you turn charger on only. You turn it off. You turn it all on. Uh, you adjust your incoming current limit. This is very important. If you just left your inverter on all the time, I think the no load consumption is about 20 watts and that adds up that's a lot of power so you just you don't want to have your inverter on yeah, when you're a, not it's using a large it. parasitic load that you just don't need so if you can turn it off and that's an easier remote to do that with all right thank you john uh tell me about these studs that you've installed that are looks like there's uh six of them five uh of them? yeah i think we have four of them in this case um basically this is going to be the the load bearing studs that hold on our board that'll have all the components on it um we they have the factory has these pre-drilled holes and so we put a uh, stainless steel bolt through it and then tighten this nut on with a lock washer so it can't go anywhere. Um, we're going to put the board on here, give the board a couple hits right where these studs are, and it'll make an impression on the back side of the board. We're going to take the board, drill those impressions out, and then when we come back in to mount the whole thing, we'll be able to get it up on top of these um, these uh, studs here instead of just having to like, self tapper and it's much better. It can hold a lot more weight this way. Looks good. All right, here is the back of the Shore Power Inlet. We put, uh, is that Cicaflex or yep. Dicor? Cicaflex, Cicaflex, just to give it an extra seal. All right, and uh, this is 6.3 cable? 10.3. 10.3, okay. 30 amp coach. Oh, that's right, okay, 10.3 cable, and you're just routing that, getting it ready for the installation of this board that Sean's putting together. You've painted it black. Yeah. You got your uh, main, and that's your sub panel, exactly. I guess. Yep. And your inverter, uh, this is for programming the inverter. Uh, laying all the parts out. It's looking good. Made a lot of progress today. Board. Yeah, so basically we're laying out all our major components here. And this is actually just our DC side of things. So this is excluding all the uh, AC that we're going to do on this side. But basically, this is uh, representative of about 45 minutes to an hour of, of our time just to lay it out to make sure that it's all going to look really nice and clean, that none of the cables are crossing over, that everything has a really direct flow um, from its source to where it needs to go. Um, there's a lot of ways you can lay these out. Um, it's pr pretty much a Tetris game. You could do a million different or orientations. What you want to do though is look at the board and say, how do I keep cables from crossing over? How do I keep the cables short um, so that there's less voltage drop? And how do I make the board just look nice in general, accessible to all the breakers and on-offs? Um, it takes a bit. <laughs> You'll yeah. play around with it for a while. Right on. Yeah, these kits are expensive. They should be more than just power systems. They should be works of art. And if you take your time on it, you can make it a work of art. John, it's the end of day two. Did you accomplish anything? <laughs> I'd like to say so. Good. Let's see. It. <laughs> we have this is our board that I've been talking about. This is going to be mounted over the wheel well. Uh, we go ahead and prefab the board. We painted it black. Um, we have our studs in place, and then this is going to be all our main components here. So we've laid out most of our solar, most of our DC, and our inverter as well, and uh, just assembling the whole system. All right, let's take a look in the rig. Has anything changed? Not much has actually changed inside the rig besides adding these studs and the shore itself, the shore inlet. Um, okay. And these studs are again to, to allow us to hold that board. It's the hanger for that board that's going to have all our components on it. Um, so once we get that built, we'll just come in here, connect it, and bring all these cables that we've routed on day one into the board. Okay, sounds good. We'll check in tomorrow.